Hi, I'm Bob Rhodes. I'm a lay member at large from the Santa Barbara District. and I'm helping out with legislative sections this year. Welcome to the Conference Secretary website, where you'll find this year's legislative information for the California Pacific Annual Conference. Our conference continually works to be good stewards of creation. In this effort to reduce our carbon footprint, we're eliminating tens of thousands of excess pieces of paper. Since you're already here, you've made the first big step to help. Thank you. This video gives brief information about the voting area of the annual conference, the difference between reports, recommendations, resolutions, petitions, and motions, legislative sections and the consent calendar, Robert's Rules of Order, and microphone etiquette. One of our responsibilities during annual conference is legislation. In order to vote, members of the conference must physically be in the appropriate area, called the bar of the conference. The voting area includes the main floor seating area and the front half of the upstairs balcony. You must be wearing the appropriately colored name badge, too. Conference legislation comes in a number of forms. Sometimes it gets confusing. Here's the short version, sort of. Reports are basically statements of accomplishments from a council, board, commission, committee, or agency of the conference. The reports reflect a group's accountability to the conference. Sometimes a report will include a recommendation. A recommendation is an action item presented within the report. The recommendation then gets voted on by the body of the conference or in a legislative section. I'll say a little more about these in a moment. A resolution is an action item presented by any one of these groups separate from any report. Resolutions may also be presented by at least 15 lay or clergy members of the conference. These action items are voted on by the body or in a legislative section. A petition may be submitted to annual conference by any person, group, local congregation, district, or other entity related to the United Methodist Church. Pretty much anyone who wasn't in that last group for resolutions. These two are voted on by the body or a legislative section. A motion is any action item that is presented during a session of the conference. Remember, while these often seem spontaneous during the plenary session, they still must be submitted in writing. Legislative sections are basically miniature plenary sessions to consider the legislative material. The section participants are comprised of an equal number of laity and clergy who are randomly organized into groups. All the sections meet at the same time, but each group considers different areas of legislation. This process enables our annual conference to accomplish far more than we could otherwise. There are some important distinctions with a legislative section. Members can only vote in the section to which they are assigned. No new legislation may be introduced in the legislative section, and legislative sections have only four possible outcomes. Concurrence. 80% of a section votes in favor of an action item. Non-concurrence. 80% of a section votes against an action item. Concurrence as amended. 80% of a section votes in favor of an action item after it's amended. No recommendation, well, no recommendation. Whichever of these outcomes, the results from all legislative sections are compiled into one document that becomes the consent calendar, and the entire calendar is either approved or rejected by the body of the conference. Items may only be removed from the consent calendar by a motion, that is supported by 50 people or more. It will then be discussed and voted on independently. The sessions and parliamentary procedures of the annual conference are carried out according to Robert's Rules of Order. Those wishing more information on Robert's Rules may find information in your local library, bookstore, or online at rulesonline.com. During annual conference, anyone who wishes to address the session must use one of the six microphones on the floor of the chapel. In order to be recognized, you're required to display one of the laminated panels indicating whether you are in favor or against a motion, requesting information, or offering a point of order. When the chair, usually the bishop, recognizes you by your microphone number, please begin by stating your name, 
your church or organization, and your position on the issue. The maximum speaking time is two minutes. On behalf of the conference secretary's office, we thank you for taking the time to watch this video and hope that it's helpful. The business undertaken each year is vital to the success of the United Methodist Churches in the CalPAC Conference, and we're grateful for your participation. Thank you.